I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. I'm going to make her say it. (laughs) You can't laugh. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 473, Bathroom Trends. Yeah, and you know that the word, the T word, okay, let's just say, is going to come up today, and she's going to have to say it. Anita's going to have to say toilet because we're talking about the bathrooms. She's just going to have to work through it, and we're helping her. This is good. This is good for her. Mm-hmm. So today, Aversion therapy. See, aversion therapy. Right? Yeah. Just confront the words that mm-hmm. you don't like. I, I am going to. My least favorite word is moist. Oh, well, that's a lot of people's least favorite word I've noticed. Is it? Okay, well, that won't come up a lot, I hope. So there's no <laughs> new moist trends on the horizon. But let's kick off with a review today. Words we will definitely want to say. Thanks to KCSF. I'm thinking maybe somebody in San Francisco, but thank you so much for saying I am binge listening to this podcast. Every episode is fantastic. Casey got right to it, and we love every single word of it. So today we're going to talk all about bathrooms, bathroom trends, things you want to maybe add to your bathroom, things you might want to consider, you know, if you're doing a remodel or a renovation, and kind of where the whole bathroom industry is going. Yeah, and I think these trends, you know, we talk about being careful with trends when we're talking about high-dollar items like tile, all these things that are high ticket items, we say to be very careful about because you don't want to be spending your money to do something super trendy, super fatty, and then two years later it's out of style. But there's some trends that last for a long time. And so I'm going to try to be, there's a few things here on my list that I think are not going to stick around. And there's some of these trends that I think you might want to incorporate into your bathroom. So I'm very excited to be talking about the trends today. And there are some very interesting changes on the horizon. And I think some of these things have some sticking power. I agree. And one of the trends, obviously, coming out of the year we've all experienced is hygiene and cleanliness is top priority, whether it's at home or out in the world. So you're going to see various products or tweaks of existing products like things like toilets that uh, really have a whole nother (laughs) level of hygiene going on. So we're going to talk about the pretties and the practicals and the the trends and the ones that are going to stick around. And I think you're going to get a ton of information today. Whether you're renovating a bathroom or not, These some of these things are just little small changes you could make to a bathroom that would not involve anything major. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to kick it off with the floating vanity. And so this is a vanity that's wall mounted. It's very similar to a traditional vanity, but uh, it stops about a foot off of the floor. So it doesn't go all the way to the floor. Usually they cover up all the piping uh, for the sink, but it's kind of, it looks like it's floating. So that's why it's called a floating vanity. And I'm seeing these more and more all over the place. And so I think these are going to be uh, a trend that's going to be around for a while. What, what do you think, Kelly? I really like them. I mean, initially when I they came onto the scene, it was very slick and a more of a modern look, which is, you know, as everybody knows, not really my look in this house. Right. Uh, but I could appreciate them. But now I'm seeing them in in different styles and different looks it still has the floatingness to it if you will but it doesn't necessarily look like it's flat faced or very slick so i think that this now that it's available in a lot of different styles may become much more mainstream and mm-hmm. here's what i really love about it you can clean under it and get you know you can have your tile and or your tile wood floor or whatever you've got going on in there 
you know, going all the way to the baseboard, obviously, and you can get under it. You can use baskets and different kinds of things to give yourself a little bit more storage because one of the drawbacks of this is, you know, it's going to be shorter, so you're not going to have as much cabinet space. But I really like the idea of being able to clean all the way under there. And also, if you're in a small space, it doesn't feel so bulky and sort of glumpy because if you have a big vanity in a small space... You know, if these were around and had a more vintage vibe like I'm seeing now or a little bit more traditional vibe, I may have chosen that for our master bathroom, which is not a big space. And the vanity does take up a a large part of it. It just kind of, you know, the shower's on one side, so it kind of balances it out, but it is definitely the heavier side of the room. Right. They're this has less visual space. And so I think that is something that really works well with a smaller bathroom. Yeah, I like them a lot. Hey, and now talking about floating vanities. So that's sort of getting smaller, bigger tile or full slab, which I love. Oh, I love that look in the shower and on the floor. And I've got one foot by two foot faux marble tiles on my floor. And I really love that big tile on the floor. Uh I do too. And I think you can definitely pull that off in a smaller space. I mean, you would, if it's teeny tiny, you might have to cut the tiles too much and lose the look. But if you have, you know, even a mid-sized bathroom, you can probably get away with a nice size tile. So bigger tiles in the shower, on the floor, as Anita's saying, and it gives you less grout lines, which I love. I hate grout. So that's a really great pro of going that way. And then you can also consider full slab. That's what I did in my master shower, marble, full slab. If you can get away with from yes. using a ton of grout lines, I think that's the way to roll. The other thing I've been seeing that's, I think this is more of a fad. So I'm going to put this in a, I'm not sure I would spend money on it. Uh, a lot of money on it, but the good news is this is a small spend, and that is the backlit mirrors and medicine cabinets. So I don't know that it would be that expensive to change that out, but this it's a mirror or a vanity uh, or a medicine cabinet, and the light, rather than the bulbs facing you, they're actually behind the frame, and they come out from behind, kind of like a backlit. Uh, if you take a picture of someone and the sun is behind them, that's called backlit, and so that's kind of the look that that we've got going on here. So it would be a softer look. It wouldn't be so much light in the morning staring you in the face. It might be a little more gentler wake up in the morning. I'm really intrigued by these. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I love the look of these. Mm-hmm. So I would suggest to anyone that is interested in them, I'm, and I'm sure it's very helpful to put your makeup on depending on you know the type of bulb that's in the back there. Go to a higher end plumbing supply store. Like I know we have one here in Pasadena that's pretty great where they have a showroom and you can look around and see what these are like in action. You know, have them put the lights on, check out the shapes. I wouldn't just buy something like that without having seen it and seen what the quality of the light is. Right. And I would want to see if it's going to get you enough light maybe to use it for a makeup mirror. Because oh, I'm you're not thinking sure. maybe it is. It might not be enough. I light. see. Okay. Yeah. Let's jump back to the tile for one more minute. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of subway on the vertical, which is. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This might be more in the the fad category, as Anita's pointing out. I'm not Eh, sure. I'm not Eh, crazy about it. It's Eh. kind of trying too hard, I think. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure about that one. But I am sure about this one, the next trend, and that is wall mount faucets versus a faucet mounted on the countertop. And we did this in our powder room when we built our house in 2013. So quite a while ago. However... You're a trendsetter. Still still very, very hot. I'm still seeing it. I think it's still very hot. And I think it's going to, so it's already been around for a while. And I think that's going to continue to be hot. I agree. I think it's like the pedestal sink, you know, the white pedestal Mm -hmm. sink in the bathroom. That was a long time ago when that first emerged on the scene. I mean, obviously it was, it's an older look and then it came back and people were crazy for them. And I think that that has just become a classic. And I, I believe the same thing has happened or will happen with those wall mounted faucets. There's just so many different styles and it's such a nice, clean look. And there's oftentimes when you really get down to the nitty gritty, if you're designing a bathroom, if particularly if it's a smaller bathroom, 
if you have to have the faucets mounted on the deck, which is, you know, whatever your counter, your surface is, and it's got to be behind the sink, then the sink has to be, you know, further away from Mm -hmm. where the wall is. Then the cabinet either has to be bigger or the sink has to be smaller, depending on the amount of space you have, right? Right. So if you're able to put them up on the wall, then you can have the sink all the way almost close to where, you know, the the, the wall would meet the counter. Mm-hmm. And you have all that extra space and a couple of inches here or there in the size of your sink or the depth of your counter or your cabinet really can make a difference. Well, and these go so well with the bowl sinks that sit on top of the counter. Right. On top of your countertop. So it works beautifully with those. So I actually have a marble bowl that sits there and I just love the look of it. So it's really a very elegant look if you can do that or if you're redoing your bathroom. I think it's a beautiful look. Here's a tip on that because I am working with a client right now and we're redoing her master bath, like warping the whole thing out. It's super fun. So this was a great topic for me to be researching at the same time. So we're going to do the wall mount and she wants a vessel sink. So it's exactly what Anita's describing. Uh, But we really haven't figured out how deep the counter is going to be yet and the cabinet because it's going to have to all be custom. So I'm saying we can choose, but we can't buy yet uh, the faucet because you have to make sure that it's long enough that the the faucet spout is going to be long enough to to Mm -hmm. come over the sink. Because in my powder room, I had this experience. I got this great little vintage style sink from Rejuvenation. I was so excited, Mm. this little wall mount um, sink. And then I got this cool bridge faucet that was going to come out of the wall mm, and nice. but so the plumber puts it all together for me the faucet was so much bigger it went over the sink oh, and no. would have poured all the water on the floor oh no <laughs> so i hate when that happens don't you hate when that happens and it happens so rarely but you do hate it so then we had to take the sink off and then furrow it out like you know make it come away from the wall a little bit more so mm-hmm. the water would actually pour into the sink. So silly little story, but it it obviously does happen on occasion. So think about that. There's all these things to think about, but it's a great idea to, to go with the wall mounted faucets. Love that look. Absolutely. How about the separate tub and shower? That is, mm-hmm. you know, that's just the way it is. If you're doing a new bathroom, I really don't see a lot of people just putting the tub with the shower in it, you know, unless it's maybe uh, an Airbnb or the t- the space is just doesn't allow for it. If you have the room, do a separate tub and shower. Yes, I think absolutely. This is what uh, people, buyers are looking for. And I think people want the option of if they're, they've broken their leg or they have somebody elderly visiting, they can just walk in the shower. So everybody likes that idea of just being able to walk in for someone maybe who has limited mobility. They might not be able to get in and out of the tub. And if you do the separate shower and tub, it frees you up to do a freestanding pedestal tub. And if you are putting in a new bathroom for the uh, for your bathroom, the master bath, I highly, highly recommend you put in a pedestal tub. These freestanding tubs are now the gold standard, and that's what people are looking for. And you know how it used to be the garden tubs, and now it's the pedestals tub. And that really, you really can tell when it was built just by looking in that bathroom. Okay. Is a garden tub the kind of jacuzzi set yes. in gigantic Well, they're sometimes. kind of square or yeah, or, or, in or, the or octangular or, or something. Yep. They're, they're yep. Yep. humongous. Right? In a lot of area for you to put all the candles and everything right <laughs> garden tub i never really knew that it was that that um term was used for it that's what's coming out of my client's bathroom well yes yes it, those are, and we're gonna mm-hmm. we can put in like a gigantic shower and so the showers are getting bigger too so they're gonna have mm-hmm. a bigger shower with two heads on either end and sprayers and yada 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 and then we're gonna do with a freestanding tub now here's one i'll ask you we haven't discussed this beforehand you'll mm-hmm. be surprised to hear listeners mm-hmm. but <laughs> we are looking for 
tubs, you know, freestanding tubs for this bathroom. And I found something, and they like more earthy, kind of like, you know, kind of like spa, like post ranch mm-hmm. kind of look. Mm-hmm. And I found this. It's cement and fiber, but it looks like mm. it's cement in an earthy mm. color. Mm-hmm. And it's gorgeous. So I found this company that creates them. And also Pottery Barn is selling it. It is not inexpensive. So I don't know that we're going to do it. But <laughs> you're shocking me that it's not expensive, that it's expensive. It's expensive. But it's <laughs> yeah. this company called Native Trails. And I'll put mm-hmm. the link in the show notes. It's a super cool company from what I can tell. Started by this woman. And she's got people all over the globe making these things. So it's like helping people crafting and you know making a living. It's sustainable. It's all this good stuff, right? And mm-hmm. And they make these beautiful things. So, but what do you think about? It really looks like cement, but it's lighter because it's got fiber in it. What would you think about something like that? Do you think that's a fad, or that do you think that's a sustainable trend? I'd have to see it. I have to see it. Well, uh, when we do the show notes, you can have a look. I'm going to take a look when we do the show notes, and okay. other people can ring in on that too. Let us know. What All you right. Think. So the moment you've been waiting for, Kelly. Now, <laughs> listen in, everyone. <laughs> She might say it really quietly. <laughs> Smart toilets. Okay, see, there I said Well it. done. See? You, see fa- you faced it. You faced it. I know. It I faced my it. fear. Okay, well, so I have mixed feelings about these. So the Smart Toilets have a, see, I've already said it twice now, ah. have a smaller, they don't have the water tank on the back. So it's a smaller profile. I mean, and again, the less I see the toilet, the better. So the smaller it is. The less there is to look at is, you know, then I'm a happy camper. Now, the thing I like about them is all the good stuff. Touch-free flushing. See, I even said flush. See how good I'm doing today? Wow, wow. Self-closing lids, bacteria-killing light, self-cleaning. Like, I don't even think you're going to have to touch it. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT 
and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. All right, Anita, do you want to say anything more about toilet, toilet, toilet? Well, I want to give the downside. And okay, then you, you can share your thoughts. Okay, okay, go ahead. So, so the downside is, and now I'm going to take off my designer hat and I'm going to put on my engineer hat. And I'm going oh. to tell you, now you're adding electronics to something that's a pretty basically simple piece of equipment. Uh, a toilet agent, uh, a just a you know, run-of-the-mill toilet is very simple. There's not a lot of breaking points. And so there's not a lot of things that can go wrong with it. You just hope, right? Yes. yes. What? You just really hope that's true and that well, you never have to call the floor. But once you add electronics, you are – now there's all these potential failure points. Because yes. now there could be something wrong with the plumbing or the, you know, the valves or whatever, or there could be something wrong with the electronics. So if it's not working, do you call a plumber? Do you call an electrician? Would an electrician even know how to work on the toilet? Are you going to just have to replace it? I mean, so I'm full of questions about what happens when this thing doesn't work. <laughs> And then what happened to the bowl on the back? How is it getting? Okay, now wait a minute. How is it getting water in there? Because that's the beauty of a regular toilet. If you're out of water, you can just take a bucket, put water in the back. It's going to work. You don't need electricity and you just need some water. But now, is this thing going to work if your power's out? Oh, yeah. So it's not just that you have a reliability issue, all these other things that could go wrong with it, and what's going to ha- and can it even be repaired? Or are you going to have to replace it? But then, what happens if the power's out? Because I think it's not going to work when the power is out. And this might not have been an issue with me a year ago, right. but in February we went through the Texas freeze. It was forty degrees in the house. We had no power for thirty six hours. Now, if I had not been able to use the toilet during those thirty six hours, I think that it would have been over for me. You would have had to move, right? I in would the have had to have moved once again. That's right. <laughs> This whole thing reminds me of when my grandpa was getting a new car many years ago, and he was like, I'll just roll down my window. I don't need it. That's just going to add something that'll complicate it. And what if that breaks? Well, but you, th- you can't get that anymore. So this- No, no. And and our window did break one time where we couldn't roll it up and down anymore because the, elect- the electronics stopped working. So we right. had to get it repaired. So this is very interesting. And here's the thing, you know, you read in these, uh, you know, bathroom magazines that you can get at the grocery store or you see something online, but you don't think about all these questions and mm-hmm. finding out the answers to these questions. This is why this podcast is so helpful. So well, the- and the, the, but then let me just go back to that for one second, because if you can't find someone to work on this, that's a problem. If you're out in the country, if you're not in a, in a very metro area, you're probably going to have a hard time getting someone that's even going to work on one of these toilets. So, I mean, that's something to think about. Yeah, you got one of these she-she toilets. Nobody's going to know how to fix it. I mean, listen, it's all fun till the toilet breaks. <laughs> I'm so proud of you how many times you said that. <laughs> and then you brought in the engineering, and I think you really got comfortable with the whole issue. So, um, hey, yes, I think. Hey. So I don't need therapy on this now. No, this no. This was my therapy. It was really good. And... You've posed a lot of great questions, and if somebody is considering having one of these types of toilets, you know they're they're going to want to ask these questions of whoever's helping them, or that we're going to ask the internet and get some good answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't even. I'd wanna... wait. I'd wait till they're more ubiquitous. That's my advice. Oh, that's a great word. I do love that word. Okay, so how about specialty paints that resist mildew? Mm, that sounds good. Now, now I, if it got moist, see, oh, <laughs> that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> oh gosh, I think I just. Well, it's it. your turn now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. <laughs> if if people take long showers and it gets overly moist in your bathroom, <laughs> you might be happy that you see, have this type good. of paint because it it resists mildew, which is caused by moistness or moisture. <laughs> moisture, I can say. Uh, so. I've only found one paint company thus far that's doing this, and it's uh, Pittsburgh Paints. Uh, And I don't know that everybody can get that anywhere. But if they're doing it and it becomes something that people are asking for, uh, lo and behold, the other companies will be doing it too. I think it's kind of cool. And maybe other companies are doing it. I, I just checked Benjamin Moore and a few of the mainstream ones. Could be a great idea. You know, we all think about in the bathroom, oh, you don't want to put up 
maybe you don't want to put up wallpaper. You want to make sure the kind of wallpaper you But I never really considered a type of paint that would be resistant to mildew. So just good to know it's out there. I don't know what kind of colors it comes in. So explore that. While we're on the wall treatments, I think I mentioned to everyone, I did put wallpaper in my bathroom. I used pasted paper and I did it myself and I love it. And now it's been several weeks, maybe a couple of months already. No issues with it. And the great nice. thing about pasted paper is that if I get tired of it, I can just pull it right off myself and there will be no damage to the wall. So we'll put the link to pasted paper in the show notes as well. But that's a great option for a bathroom. Well, and I was going to say wallpaper is coming back in bathrooms too. Yeah. So that's glad, I'm glad you brought that up. So another thing I'm seeing are the wet room bathrooms. And uh, This is a bathroom where there's really not a wall or there's not an enclosure around the shower. The whole room becomes the shower, basically, when the water is on. And so it's all completely tiled. And I've been kind of looking at that because we're actually thinking about having a barn built at our farm. And you know know how we have that cute little shed? Yeah. I've been in that shed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been in the shed, right. Uh, So have a lot of mice that have been in there. So (laughs) (laughs) apparently it's a popular hanging out place. But anyway, we're thinking about converting it into, once we have barn built, is converting that into a little guest room. Now, it's only like, I don't know, 14 by 18, something. It's not a very big space, but it's where the water tank is for our water well. So we do have water there, and I'm thinking, what if we kind of closed that off where people wouldn't have to be looking at the water tank? And then I was thinking about putting a bathroom in there, but it's going to be very, very small because it's not a a big space. It would probably be maybe four feet by five feet, five feet by five feet. So I was kind of looking at the wet room bathroom, but I just the idea of being able to hang my hang clothes somewhere or set them somewhere like on the toilet um i they might get wet so i'm just thinking i'm i've decided against the wet room look so i'm thinking about so does every so what is there just a drain in the middle does everything get wet yeah yeah everything in the room gets wet when you turn the shower so even like the toilet seat and everything yes everything would get wet so i'm thinking just kind Hmm. of there's some corner showers and there's some other things we can do with just kind of the glass or maybe even just a shower curtain so it doesn't have to be big uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking because I just, I don't like the idea of everything getting wet. It's a cool, it's it's one of those ideas that sounds cool, but then when you're using it, I can see the downside. Yeah. Like maybe if you had, you know, a bathroom in Costa Rica and you could slide the door open and let the breeze come in and just walk out into the rainforest or something. I could see that working, but like if I had that. My daughters already make it like a wet bathroom. They are so, there's, you can actually, like, it, there's puddles. I don't know what they do. And on the floor, and everything's wet. Well, it's you could crazy. open the door, but, you know, the cows might see you. I don't know. Oh, I get, yeah, that could. You know, well, hey. there's no rainforest out there, though. No, yeah, but there's a lot of fields. You just grow those wildflowers a little taller. It'll be fun. <laughs> How about quartz, the, which is a great non-porous countertop? It withstands frequent cleaning. Uh, so it's in line with the cleanliness and the hygiene that we you know, kicked off the show talking about. It's a great think- countertop choice. Oh, absolutely. And I believe it is the number one countertop choice right now. And most people are going for white and even a faux marble look for these countertops. But the quartz is absolutely the hottest going look for the bathroom. So I think it's a great choice. Yeah. So I thought of another thing that is really hot now that's actually been hot for quite a while, but I see it continuing. And that is having a statement piece lighting in the room, like a chandelier over the tub. Took the words right out of my mouth. See, I think that's something that really is uh, becoming quite popular. And it's I'm just seeing it more and more everywhere. Whereas, you know, at one point, the it was just kind of, uh, you know, our electricians just looked at us. I mean, that was another thing that I did back when we built this house. And, uh, you know, it's was you, you got frowned on for doing it back then. But now it seems quite popular. Well, Anita, people are paying attention to what you're doing, clearly. <laughs> well, I'm not the only one doing it. I'm well, not the saying the wall faucet. I mean, there's a pattern here. <laughs> I definitely put some interesting, beautiful lighting in your bathroom. You know, just the way we talk about the kitchen. The kitchen, the bathroom, they were thought of as utilitarian spaces. And they really weren't treated like the rest of your house. And, and they should be. 
<laughs> and, you know, maybe some people were doing that, but most people weren't. And you're absolutely right. I feel like the people that are the trades people still aren't 100% getting it. And if you have somebody who gets it, you know, keep that person's number and, you know, buy them lunch when they work at your house because that's rare. I, I still get like eye rolls when I'm like, everything has to be on dimmer. So like everything has to be on dimmer. <laughs> like, well, the know, thing with the yeah. light is it's not that they're – the problem is it's a lot of places it's not to code yeah. because there's some possibility it might fall in and still be connected with the wires and then may possibly electrocute someone. The likelihood of that oh, happening is pretty really? low yeah. again, but I guess technically it's possible yeah. it could happen. But, yeah. but I would say if it falls down that low, it's probably going to disconnect from the wiring. But Yeah, exactly. There'll be some sort of interview. Or you cost. hope it will. Yeah, it will be. yeah exactly. <laughs> It's very small chance. Of <laughs> very small chance. <laughs> Although I do live in an earthquake zone. But, but anyway, oh, no. I like living on the edge a little bit. You know, you just never know. So overall, the idea of the bathroom now is that it should serve your needs, have a spa sanctuary type of feel to it, and have some real personality. You know, that's, I think, the overarching idea. And however you choose to do that with different uh, colors, the colors are actually a little bit warmer. There's not just the white anymore. And people are bringing in those more like wood tone tile floors and things like that. So there's a lot of ways to achieve that look. And it's there's a lot of ways to do it depending on the size of your bathroom. Just because you have a small bathroom, don't feel like you were limited. There, Oh, Right. And here's something you could do that that does not require a re reno on your bathroom. And that is to put in a regular si a regular room rug, not just a bath mat, yeah. but a nice rug that you would put in your living room or in your bedroom, just but whatever size would actually fit in your room. We have a very white bathroom. And so I put in a blue and white wool flat weave rug and it's really warmed up the space. It's nice to walk on in the winter, but also just that color is very cheery in the room. So I agree with you. It's nice to add some color and texture. And another thing people are doing is adding, using subway tile with color. So it's not just white anymore. So you can add color there. But again, I would caution on that mm, just too. to be sure because, mm, you know, mm. it might be your color, but then when you go to sell the house... That's the kind of thing that people say, oh, I'm not buying the house because they had orange tile in the bathroom. Yeah. And there's something about a, a bathroom that just has a, you know, a real clean look to it in, in the color palette as well. I, I'm mm -hmm. all for adding a pop here or there. And there's so many ways you can do that. Towels, this rug idea, a basket for a plant. You know, speaking of plants, great place to have a plant. Oh, yeah. Because it's right. moist. <laughs> oh, you said it twice. Oh, we're just fighting our demons. So, Anita, do we have an Instagram feature today? We do. And this is a garden feature. So I know this is going to be exciting for you. It's the Claire Foster Gardens account. Uh, she's the garden editor for House and Garden. Mm -hmm. And she has gorgeous images of gardens, water features, and beautiful flower photography. I mean, isn't her feed just beautiful? It's so pretty. And she's uh, featuring lately a lot of what we would call primroses or primulia. Beautiful little plants and just mm -hmm. really delicate, interesting flowers. So definitely even just worth a look to check those all out. But yeah, she has a beautiful account. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Yes, I think you're going to want to check this one out. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. 
and that deal I want to tell you about. Visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. And what's your crush? Well, I, t- I didn't know you were going to have a garden IG, but my crush is a perennial I am loving this tough and easy to grow plant. It's called White Bouquet Tansy. It's a perennial. It does well in zones 4 to 10. It has this silvery, lacy foliage. And when it's in bloom, which is for months on end, it has literally thousands of little daisies. They kind of look almost like larger, sturdier uh, chamomile daisies Mm -hmm. if anybody's familiar with that type of little flower so you know it's not a daisy but it looks like a daisy with the yellow center and the white petals it grows about two feet tall and 30 inches wide kind of in a dome and it's self-seed so this is just an easy care plant and i'll have a link to where you can purchase the little four inch pots uh in the show notes so i'm i got about six of them and i just mm. ordered four more i'm just going to tuck them in because they just pop their happy little heads up behind shrubs and in and out and who knows in a couple of years i might have more than i even want because they do self-seed oh how wonderful okay brace yourself mm-hmm. this is another very practical crush I have for today. Okay. But you know, these are the sorts of things that just kind of make your life easier. So I like to- We rely on you for these practical crushes. Okay. So you wake up in the middle of the night. It's dark. You want to know what time it is. Is it about time to wake up or is it just like two in the morning? I mean, do you ever wake up and wonder what time it is? Yes, I do. So what do you do? How do you find out what time it is? Well, I kind of see, oh, where's the light? Like from outside, does it sound, do I hear the birds? Oh, okay. It's, it's, oh, very, okay. it's very nature oriented. Oh. <laughs> and then I just okay. hope I fall back to sleep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I mean, you can do that mm-hmm. uh, or you can look at your phone. But if you look at your phone, it's going to wake you up with all that bright light. Or you could get out of bed, um, maybe look at your clock. That may wake you up. But what if you could just open your eyes and see what time it was without a bright light to wake you up? Okay. So this is an alarm clock that projects the time on the ceiling in this red light. So it's not going to wake you up. Oh, my gosh. And so you just kind of look at it. And, you know, it's just you can just barely wake up, just kind of slightly open your eyes and see whether it's two or six. So, you know, do I try to go back to sleep or do I even bother? Right, right. So yeah, so I mean, it's really nice. It projects on the ceiling. And so it's just really nice in the middle of the night to know what time it is. And uh, yeah, it's just been a lifesaver for us, oddly enough. We really like having that. So is it there all the time or? Well, I think it's, yeah, it's on during the day, but you can't see it during the day because the other light is much brighter. Uh Uh-huh. So you only see it at night. Cool. Good to know about. But yeah, but it's on the ceiling. So you can just see it while you're, you don't even have to uh, move a muscle except your eyelids. Oh, yeah. Good to know. 
Yeah. So anyway, so it's less than 30 bucks, and I'll include a link to the one that we bought. Who knew? Yes. You did. <laughs> well, yes, I did know about this. So, oh my goodness, this was so fun hanging out with you, and I really enjoyed going over the bathroom trends, and thank you for helping me get over my fear of the <laughs> T word. I very much appreciate that, and remember, the most important thing is we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you. 